Okay, uh, asked a lovely question on meaninglessness and how far does that go and detachment. Well, all my, you know, The Course of Miracles has lessons like all my thoughts are meaningless, uh, look around the room, the table is meaningless, the light bulb is meaningless, uh, this body is meaningless, so whatever it is. So for me that's a profound lesson of meaninglessness. And of course the, the strong identification that the thoughts that seem to pass are my thoughts and there's strong body identification, there's huge identification with the body, the location of the body, what's going on in the body, the body being mine, the thoughts being mine, and this huge almost addiction to being an individual person uh, which creates the separation, the experience of separation. So, uh, of course, the, uh, I would see that the people who get attracted to The Course in Miracles uh, are, and become students of The Course in Miracles, that's an appropriate lesson because they are identified, they're strongly identified and perceiving a world filtered through the separa separating filters of being uh, Id highly identified as a body, so their experience is they are the body, and their experience is that all these thoughts are their thoughts, and that the perception of perceiving through all these belief systems and seeing a world which reflects the level of consciousness they're at, um, uh, which creates the, um, the perception of the world, like it could be a fearful perception of the world on a certain level of consciousness or a guilty, perception of the world or it could be a angry perception, whatever it is, that's the predominant filters through which the beliefs through which the ego is perceiving the world and having this experience of being in separation, being a, an individual uh, in separation. So uh, doing the course is enlightening, you know, these thoughts are meaningless, um, this body is meaningless, the world is meaningless, the plant is meaningless, the table is meaningless and you're letting go of um, the belief systems. So what, what there is meaning in uh, creates the individual experience. So if there's strong identification with the body and there are beliefs that it's my body, then the perception is that I'm, I am an individual body. Uh, and I am an individual body with my individual thoughts, which are my thoughts, uh, and then this all creates a perception, an experience of separation, uh, and that is reflected in um, the repressed emotions, the belief systems, and the level of identification with the body, which is pretty much, um, uh, you'll have whole countries which are vibrating and creating kind of a universal you know, the TV, uh, the, the dominant belief systems of each country, uh, creating, you know, almost like a shared, uh, a shared, uh, of course there's different levels of consciousness in a country, but there's also a sort of a general gravitation to shared belief systems. Uh, lesson 14 of the Course of Miracles does allude to that to, some, to, to a good extent. So, um, so, uh, one of the things I like talking about, because I go to the 12-step addiction fellowships, you know, I mean, it's like, well, addiction is where you make something so meaningful it becomes really loud. You know, like if you had um, an alcoholic, um, I think, you know, like an alcoholic, if they probably went down on a bus ride, uh, uh, they'd probably notice all the pups, you know, uh, and. Yeah, they'd be, probably reflect back, like, how was your journey here? Well, I saw this pub on that thing, and then I saw this pub, and they would recount to you the pubs. I'm an overeater, so it'd be like, well, you know, I just went past that restaurant, and I saw the people eating food on, on tables outside, and then I walked past this shop, which had biscuits in it, and that was like, well, reflect back your journey here. Well, that's what, what, I, what I saw. Uh, so it just depends. So whatever has meaning 
see, those are the only things I, I tend to see and recollect. Um, and uh, like I wouldn't probably notice handbags. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that, but there you go. But uh, down the street, you know, it would just, I just wouldn't see them. Even if the shop, it was a street full of handbag shops, it'd be like nothing, there was nothing there. <laughs> and if there was a shop full of restaurants, it'd be like I'd notice everything. There'd be like events, and there'd be even memory would go. So that's meaning and, and not meaning. So things which are meaningless don't exist for me. Things which have meaning exist. In fact, things which my ego projects a lot of meaning for, there's like a huge, like, it's almost like that's my experience. And even that's my fantasy experience, like I could be fantasizing about cakes, even when there's no cakes around. It's that strong, that, that is so safe. And I think most, a lot, some other people will be able to relate to that. So, but what would happen if I made the cakes meaningless? What would happen if I made my, my body meaningless? What about even the past is meaningless and holding memories is meaningless? What about if everything in the world is equally meaningless? There's nothing there that needs to be tracked, uh, put a story on to say something is more important, you know, like a cake is more important than a table. Uh, in fact, then what happens is that the ego's perceptive filters that create ego perception would all be dismantled. So, um, so I'm going to say a few things like, uh, I think, you know, most people would not argue, like, uh, Course in Miracles is removing the blocks to love. Uh, so what it's saying, which um, uh, I'll try and frame it so I don't get into conflicting arguments, is like if you remove everything from the ego, there is an absolute truth that is underneath. Uh, and this, uh, some people with, with, with uh, um, certain ideas wouldn't like that. There is an absolute truth if you let go of everything that's held onto the ego that, that is under there. So it's safe. Uh, you know, it's safe uh, to those that would be scary to those who believe that my belief systems and my body is what I am and if I let all of that go, it's too scary you know, I'll die and there'll be nothing left but uh, for me, of course uh, well, I can say from my own experiences I've seen, recounted countless videos of mystical experiences that uh, uh, it's uh, if I let go of all my ego filters and perception, it would be infinite light beyond all imagining. So there's an absolute truth which is blocked by the, um, the identification with being an object and, and being in a world of objects. You know, so it's limiting the experience to a limited experience, an experience of separation and limitation. But there's different levels of truth. You know, how far does a rabbit hole go? It depends how much of the ego you've managed to uh, dismantle through doing the Course in Miracles or whatever spiritual work you're doing. The observer is another good tool. You know, um, uh, what's observing the thoughts, what's observing the body, what's observing perception, what, it, what observes uh, waking consciousness and dreaming consciousness and deep sleep. So, um, is there an observing of all of that? Is there something here that, that remains when all of that's gone? Is there something beyond everything that can come and go? So, so, the, um, so usually when you start making things meaningless, you're letting go of your belief systems, the body. Then uh, as, as things go down, you find if there's anything left to render meaningless, you make that meaningless. Uh, now, if you get to places of oneness or flow, beyond thought and beyond being a body, then uh, you may find that the idea that any, there is a you that needs to make another thing meaningless would, of course, be not long ago. Yep, you're on uh, camera. Yeah, I'm fine on camera. So, what I'm thinking while listening to you, and if we go back to the early course lessons, yes. So, and I'm paraphrasing, I can't remember the exact wording. We look around the room and we indiscriminately pick objects and we say, this cup is meaningless, this chair is meaningless. And when I was doing that, in my room at the moment, there is a step ladder against the wall where I've taken some curtains down. And then there's the mug that I drink coffee in and then there's a TV. And I'm looking around the room at the various things, the TV is meaningless, the step ladder is meaningless, the mug is meaningless. And there seems to be 
I don't know if I'm going to word this properly, but there seems to be some sort of conflict with me where I might get meaningless mixed up with usefulness. Whereas step ladder, does it really mean anything? Is there some deep meaning to a step ladder? But I mean, it's useful. You know, just take the curtains down. The curtains are meaningless, but they are. They keep the light out. Um, if I was to take these inanimate physical objects and remove all meaning to them, then what is supposed to happen to those inanimate objects? Because I don't feel particularly attached to them, I don't particularly identify with them, they're just things that I've got. Um, or is it sim or is it more simplistic to say, well this is just a warm up exercise where you're looking at the world and you're sit and you're just and, and certain attachments will come into your head as you progress. Don't you can clarify that? I think uh, it's a, a powerful on many different levels because, mm. you know, I think for most people, like a table is relatively meaningless. Yeah. You know, it's not got any significant charge or meaning to it. But just, there's a thing where the ego tends to be drawn to things in a room or see things or witness things and is drawn to <clears throat> looking at them uh, as if they have meaning so, in a room. So, I mean, it doesn't apply to me particularly. So, say for instance, I picked out a family photograph. Yes. And I say, this is meaningless. There may be an inner conflict thinking, well, hold on, that's my family. This is, a, this is an example that doesn't actually apply to me. Yes. Because I have got things in my room that do mean things to me, such as my camera and, and, and things that relate to my own special interests and, and passions. And, and so it, it's is this idea that during the indiscriminate choosing of things, we will we will potentially focus on something that does have a little bit more of a... Yeah, you know, it's like it says, spend an equal amount of time. So the table right. is meaningless, and then the family photo which is next to it, which I may have a lot of associations and project a lot of meaning and charge on, you, you look at that for the equal amount of time, and that's just as meaningless, you know, it's like... I'm willing to see that as totally meaning stripped of everything. And then I look at the plant, well, that's meaningless. But then there's like a 50 pound note. And, well, well, that's just meaningless as well. Mm. So it's almost like a, a mind training yeah. of just indiscriminate, uh, equal amounts of time. You're not even allowed, I'm not allowed to look at the table for one second, but look, look at the photo for 10 seconds right. and say, oh, yeah, and make a story about it. And, and these so. things that we have a story about, therefore, yeah. are collectively build up this, um, they anchor us into this idea exactly. of who we are as exactly. humans exactly. rather than yeah. as spiritual beings. You got it, yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm just, you know, it's just this in the So there will be things, that I'm sure the Course knows that, maybe 99% of the things in the room aren't quite meaningless, but there'll be things that there's training. I just smash that until it's almost a mystical thing where right. now when I walk into the room, maybe a few days later, I don't notice the, the photo on the wall. Mm. It's gone. So, and um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. Okay. So, um, and then, you know, uh, like, um, hopefully you'll move at a certain point, these things no longer create, uh, if you like, use your word anchors, uh, that then cr bring you down to a lower level of consciousness where the ego is making a story about certain things in the environment. And then you get to the thing where if your body doesn't mean anything, and you lose your awareness of your body, and none of your thoughts, and none of the photos in the room mean anything, and those individuals, like, that's my ex-girlfriend, or that, that's my father, or whatever, it doesn't mean anything, then you, you might start to get to places where I think a lot of people have got to, your advanced students, of flow, right. where you're no longer a person, and these mystical flow states tend to happen, and there's no you there, and there's no you thinking about things or doing things. And that's because all that ego tracking and storytelling of the world has just completely been wiped off. Mm. And, then, uh, and then you keep going on with your spiritual work to try and get to more mystical states. So how, how deep, the, I mean, for me, the deepest I got to was the, the white light spiritual. And there's no world and infinite light and love, which is so blindingly immense that it's obvious the world could not exist at the same time as that. So, and so in this 
like uh, there's different levels of being in the world. Like I could be, if I, I, and I can resonate at different times. Like I could be very body identified if there's a lot of pain in the body. So then it's like, well, what are you? Oh, I feel like I'm a body. Or it could be at times, well, what are you? Well, I'm identified with this huge story about uh, my taxes. You know, and there's a me and there's another person and there's anger and whatever it is. So that's the level. And then that other place, there is no me, there is no body. Uh, there is no me choosing or making mistakes, choosing when to speak to a person, when not to speak to a person. Everything effortlessly happens without me being there in a state of effortless flow. Or, and there can sometimes be very profound, intense experiences where there's just bliss and tears. You know, so it just how deep it can go, it can go very deep. And, um, and in the recognition of those deeper mystical states, it's obvious then that those states of being a body, being thoughts in stories and conflicts are much more uh, limited, separated states. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that's yeah. the answer to that one. Thank you for the lovely